Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, May 8th, 2018. And I hope everyone's having a beautiful day in the Lord. <clears throat> it's a lovely day here in North Jersey. Uh, sun is shining and going out without a coat or a jacket. It's just so pleasant. And uh, I thank God that we're having this nice weather. <laughs> And it reminds me sometimes where there's um, strife and crisis in other areas of the world, like Hawaii with the volcano and all these other um, bad critical weather events. We always have to pray for our brothers and sisters uh, to help them, to help them overcome what's on their plate because at any time it could be on our plate we need to be very compassionate towards them and loving and always keep them in prayer i have a devotional for you today but first i would like to say the our father so please join me our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this day. Father, I want to thank you for that last message that you gave me and that you are continuing to give me, Father. Um, I pray for clarity on that. Um, and I just want to tell you, Father, that I love you so very much. And um, I, I just I just thank you. I'm aware, so aware of all my blessings and the peace that you've given me, everything. Father, I'm so aware of it. And I want to thank you for it. I want to thank you. And I want to ask you, Father, to answer everyone's prayer here, if it is in your will, that came to me with their petitions to intercede for them to you. And um, Father, I ask you to heal them. I ask you to lighten their circumstances and I ask you, Father, to reveal yourself to them in Jesus' name. I want to bless you, Father. Amen. Okay. This is called His Agony and Our Access. And the reading is from Matthew 26, verses 36 to 38. And it says... Jesus come oh, Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples stay here and watch me we can never fully comprehend Christ's agony in the garden of Gethsemane but at least we don't have to misunderstand it it is the agony of God and man in one person coming face to face with sin. We cannot learn about Gethsemane through personal experience. Gethsemane and Calvary represent something totally unique. They are the gateway into life for us. It was not death on the cross that Jesus agonized over in Gethsemane, in fact, he stated very emphatically that he came with the purpose of dying. His concern here was that he might not get through this struggle as the son of man. He was confident of getting through it as the son of God. Satan could not touch him there. But Satan's assault was that our Lord would come through for us on his own 
solely at the, uh, at the Son of Man. If Jesus had done that, he could not have been our Savior. And you could read about that in Hebrews 9, 11 to 15. Read the record of his agony in Gethsemane in the light of his earlier wilderness temptation. The devil departed from him until an opportune time. You could read that in Luke 4.13. In Gethsemane, Satan came back and was overthrown again. Satan's final assault against our Lord as the Son of Man was in Gethsemane. The agony of Gethsemane was the agony of the Son of God in fulfilling his destiny as the Savior of the world. And uh, not to digress too much, but you see they use this word destiny here because he came for a purpose. He came into this world for a purpose. And some of us who are here in this world have a higher purpose, just like Jesus Christ had a higher purpose. Okay? Why are there some people who have ministries and others that don't? I'm not saying that everyone doesn't have a purpose. We all have purpose. But there is a plan that is in place from our Heavenly Father, okay, to fulfill all that is in this puzzle here that we're living out. And everyone has to play their part. The veil is pulled back here to reveal all that it cost him to make it possible for us to become sons of God. Yeah. All that believe on what was done on the cross through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now become sons of God instead of sons of man. Born of the Spirit instead of born of the flesh. There's a transition there. There's a window that opens up. There's a door that opens for us that was shut in the Garden of Eden. Okay, it gave us a way to have that back and forth with the Lord, the same way Adam and Eve had constant communication with the Father before they fell uh, into sin and the curse. See, this was a way to give us a way back to our Father, our Creator. Now, there are many people out there that take this the grace of God and it is an act of mercy and grace that he sent his only begotten son to suffer like that so that we could have that door open and that window raised and have that communication back and forth with the father and be right with him but is not license to revel in your sin that's blasphemy to everything that the lord did see it cleansed us the blood of christ cleanses us but when you use it to hide behind jesus's robe and jump up and down and say i can sin all i want and i'm covered by the blood that's satan that's blasphemy. I don't care what you say. And you know what that does? The cross becomes a way to remove and nullify the sovereignty of our Lord and God. You're using the cross event to, to completely live in sin and still be justified. Because that's what Satan wanted. He wanted his sin and he still wanted power. Okay? And this false certainty, okay, really what it is, it's nullifying the Father's sovereignty to do whatever he wants at any time. You're saying that you now have power to sin and the father cannot strike you because of what Jesus did 
Think about that. Think about every time you defend your sin and defend your brothers that sin and call it judging other people for being pulled out, okay? What you're doing is putting tape on God's mouth and saying, God can't strike us. Nah, 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 nah. God's never going to hurt us. We have the blood of Jesus on us. We could sin as much as we want. We can live recklessly. We can sin willfully. We, can not, we don't have to repent. We don't have to do this. And what you're doing is you're saying that you're more powerful than God. You're taking and nullifying God's sovereignty. That's Satan. The cross of Christ was a triumph for the Son of Man. It was not only a sign that our Lord had triumphed, but that he had triumphed to save the human race. Because of what the Son of Man went through, every human being has been provided with a way of access into the very presence of God. Okay, so now you have to take this is this is probably the most valuable sentence here in this whole devotional. <clears throat> because of what Jesus went through, every human being has been provided with a way into the very presence of God. Now that means being born again gives you access to the presence of God. Now, if you're in the presence of God, will you sin? If God is holy? Would you be able to justify sin in the presence of God? Hmm? Would, would you be able to do in front of God what you do? to other Christians on YouTube here and shake your fist at them and say, we're covered by the blood of Jesus. That's what you're saying to, to our creator every time you do that. And you become a stumbling block to all people and send them the message that everything that they do from this point on is covered by the blood of Jesus. And you put tape on the father's mouth and render him useless that he can't do anything to you. That's Satan twisting what Jesus did so that he could capture God's people and confuse them and give them a delusion. Think about it. It makes, it makes perfect sense. What was removed from Adam and Eve in the garden after the sin? They were separated from the fall. They were sent out with a curse. The Lord gave them a way to remove the curse. So why would the Father want to send them back to the sin and say, that's okay, you know. That's kind of like what a narcissistic child would want a parent to do is to let them run roughshod. And then what happens is the child starts to control the parent. And that's exactly what the once saved, always saved people do. They're controlling the parent. God, the Father, by running around, committing all this sin, and saying, the Father is allowing me to do it. And our Lord and Heavenly Father is not a bad parent. You are totally, totally in a delusion, let me tell you. You need to fix your relationship with the Lord. All of you. All of you. All this unholy circle that's out there that believes this hogwash. Okay? You need to come to the Lord now on your knees. All of you. You're the dreamers. The Pharisees. BS. Todd. All of you. All of you that are knit tightly in that circle. You all need to come to your knees and repent. 
and work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Or you're going to find yourself in outer darkness. The Father is not happy with you. Don't play Russian roulette with your salvation. Don't believe the lie. It's a twisted doctrine. Come to the Lord Jesus. Make it right. I'm going to put the salvation prayer right behind this. Thankfully, our Lord is merciful and he will just cleanse you up and ask him to, to reveal the truth to you on how to walk with the Holy Spirit, how to respect the ministry of the Holy Spirit how to get the Holy Spirit, because some of you probably don't have him, but you think that you do because you gave lip service. Okay, come, you have another chance. We have a Lord of many chances. Come, correct yourself, repent and start over while there's still time. The Middle East is exploding and on the verge of fulfilling biblical prophecy at any moment, and then there won't be much time left for you. God bless you. <laughs>